During the 2023 NFL Draft, there were a plethora of running backs selected. Doesn't look like the position was devalued too much, right? We're going to talk about the best, the least favorite, and even surprising fits next on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You know what time it is. It's your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find me on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout with the Draft Network and your favorite and local running back guru. And, of course, to talk championship rings and things, I got my boy, my brother, down from LSU, Mr. Champion himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find him on Twitter at the Talent Code. Keith, talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? This is Keith Sanchez, Senior Draft Analyst with the Draft Network, man, in 2019, national champ. Yes, those LSU Tigers, man. But you know why we're here. While we're here, while we're here, that's to bring championship level content surrounding the NFL draft, right? You know, we're a couple of days post NFL draft, but the draft don't stop. The content don't stop. The football don't stop. Continue to tap in with us, man. Today, we're talking running backs. We're talking about toting a rock. DP is the running back guru. Me, I just try to value the running backs. That's all, man. I just try to get these guys drafted high and get them paid, man. But listen, man, we're going through the best running back situations, right, from the draft perspective. We're going through the most questionable running back situations, and we're going those surprise picks, man. And one of the surprise picks may be the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. We're going to get into it. There's no title sponsor. So, DP, let's jump into it, baby. What's one of your best situations when it comes down to the running backs being drafted? Man, Keith, I, I think it'd be hard pressed not to talk about B. John Robinson, right? If you're a running back, what better situation than going to a team? Oh, hey, there go. Go. You see, I'm, I'm clapping, baby. I'm clapping. <laughs> I know I've been, I've been wishing this into existence. We got it. B. John Robinson in the top 10. You, you've been pounding the table for that for months, Keith, and it came to fruition. And, uh, and while I, you know, you know me, I, I didn't, I, I, I understood the pick, I didn't love it. Because I wanted to see them kind of address some more pressing needs, but for the running from a running back fit perspective, this is the perfect fit. If you're a B. John Robinson, you're a running back. Period. That you want to be successful, you want to go to a, a offensive minded coach that wants to run the football, right? You don't want to go to a if you're a, if you're a first round running back going to Andy Reid. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, it's not gonna help your career. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna win, but you're never gonna be 14, 1500 yards, and you know you're not gonna put up the numbers that you want. Yes, we saw Isaiah Pacheco have a good year last year, Keith, as a seven round rookie, but we've seen like Andy Reid kind of go away from the run game when he had Kareem Hunt, when he had Brian Westbrook in Philly, right? One of the best running backs, that, you know, you know, best kind of dual threat type running backs in my opinion of all time, one of my favorite running backs of all time. We would see Andy Reid just kind of get pass happy. But going to an Arthur Smith-led offense, B. John Robinson is put into a position where he's going to get fed the football, man. You know, they're going to run the ball, and that's the, that's that scheme. They're going to run it. I, I think it's going to be a 75-25 type of split, Keith. I wouldn't be surprised if Desmond Ritter only throws the ball 20 times, 20 to 25 times a game. I feel like they're going to lean heavy on the run. So the best, to me, the best fit was B. John Robinson to the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, hey, I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna drop into the third round, man. I'm gonna go Tank Bigsby to the Jacksonville mm, Jaguars. That's interesting. And, yeah, and, and here's why it's a very complimentary piece, right? Travis ATN, he's more of the 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 slasher, the dasher type back, right? He wants to hit the outside. He wants to catch the screens. He wants to do those type of things, right? Really work the perimeter. And Tank Bigsby, even though they're probably the same exact size, same exact frame, like they're both high cut type backs, but Tank. The nickname is appropriate, right? The guy runs hard. He's going to run physical in between the tackles. So when you talk about a complimentary piece, even though they look like exactly the right, a light, you think, you know, you know, usually when you think complimentary pieces, you think one guy is 230, one guy is 200, right? Both of these guys are probably the same exact size, but it comes down to mentality. And I think the mentality of Tank is going to complement 
the mentality of Travis ATN very well. And now they have a two headed monster of this Russian attack, right? We know that it was the Jamie Robinson situation that went back and forth, got kind of weird, kind of got solidified, you know, now it's redone. Um, but I think Tank Bigsby to the Jaguars is a really good selection for me, DP. I just love his running style. He's running in between the tackles, right? Like he's probably going to get a whole lot of too high safety situations. So he's going to really be able to tote the rock. And you're going to see explosive runs from this guy, right? Like he's somebody that can also, I think with his pro day, we talked about it on here, ran a 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, right? So he, you're going to get those explosive runs in between the tackles. And then it's going to allow for Travis Etienne to work the perimeters. So you think about even something that's comparable you know, to the Ezekiel Elliott and, and uh, Tony Pollard, right? I think Travis Etienne like is going to fit more of the Tony Pollard role to where it's like, man, that, that guy's speed just different. He's going to do a lot of the outside zone things, a lot of the tall situations. So that's the one that I was like, okay, this is could be a, un, like, you know, somewhat of a, I love the move. It's kind of underrated, but Tank is also a known name, right? So I don't think it's fully yeah. underrated to make our next segment, but that's, that's one situation nah. that I really like. Keith, I, I love I love that from the you know I, I know anybody that's listening you know that, that's a fancy football uh you know that that, that enthusiast uh they might not like this this backfield Keith. they might not like this situation because neither you know th- these are two starting quality backs right but I think I, I love how you put the Tony Pollard to Ezekiel Elliott comp in there because I actually envision I could see that Keith and and, and like you talked about with with Etienne attacking more of the outside. The outside zone, the perimeter with his speed, his birth, and it burst and, and his uh his getting him out in space. Now Tank gives you more of an inside threat where you didn't have that because that was never ATN's game. Even at Clemson, he didn't have the, the 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 he didn't run with the power, he didn't have the footwork or the patience and everything to navigate those really tight, condensed spaces in terms of exchanging gaps and everything. But Tank Bigsby excels at that. Where now you ha- you can have them both on the field at the same time, Keith. I really, that that Tony Paul, I'm, I may not even move off of that. That, that Tony Paul to Ezekiel Elliott comp for this backfield, I absolutely love because I think that's how you can get the best out of both of these situ- uh, both of these players, Keith. But I, I want to throw out another name, mm-hmm. and I, I I think this is kind of like easy, and that's Devin A. Chain to the Miami Dolphins. Why? Because all they care about is speed in Miami. That's all they really care about. Okay, you, you, yeah, explain this one to me because this one might have made the next segment for me. This one might have been questionable for me. So I was like, I wonder what the hell are they doing with this one? So explain <laughs> it, like, from your perspective, what is the optimistic viewpoint of this? I think when you look at uh, uh, Raheem Moster and Jeff Wilson, both of those guys, they're both fast, explosive players, but they stay hurt. They, they're always dinged up in some way, shape, or form whether they're not either not 100%, 80%, or they miss games. And getting Devin A-Chain into this Mike McDaniel offense, Devin A-Chain now has a quarterback for one because he didn't have that at Texas A&M. So he's got a quarterback now, but they, they're going to run the ball, that wide zone type of run style, get him on the perimeter like we talked about with ETN, but they're having those, those receivers and the weapons around them where we talked about with Tank, when he's in the game, you're still seeing too high, and he's going to see that. So I, I, I really like this fit. Because I think he can have more of an impact. Um, I think he, of course, you can catch about the backfield, but I think he might have a little bit more of an impact as a rookie than we expect. Mainly because you know, just the, the two veteran guys, they just struggle to stay healthy. So if if they either one of them get dinged up, like if Raheem Mostert misses the game and Jeff Wilson's RB one for that game, Devin A. Chain jumps right to two RB two, and now he's going to start getting in and cutting into some of the cutting some of the meat off the bone and getting into that into that rotation. And all it takes, is that, as you know, as a former coach, all it takes is being impressive in the snaps that you're in, and then that snap share starts to increase yep. until next thing you know, you're the starter. Yeah, it starts to shift, man. It starts to shift. But, hey, man, talking about shifting, right? We have to shift gears. Like I said, we <laughs> like to start off positive, right? Now we got to get into the draft picks who's like, what are they doing, right? As far as the running back situation, so we talked about best fits. We want to talk about the most questionable fits, man. Running backs in situations that either, you know, the scheme doesn't fit, the situation doesn't fit. You know, they have two, three running backs already. So coming up next, man, we're going to get into the, the running back fits of, you know, most questionable draft situations. Guys, if you're looking for a delicious snack and you don't want all the sugars and calories, then you need to try the best tasting protein bar ever. That's Built Bar, Built Puffs. You got to try it. I promise if you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste, I got just a thing for you. Built Bars and Built Puffs 
are healthy and they taste amazing. Why do they taste so amazing? Because they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's real chocolate. Guys, they have un unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and cookies and cream, which I've told you time and time again, that is my favorite. You can go to your local Walmart um, or your local Sam's Club while you're there and get you one of the specialty flavors uh, that's still at BuiltBar.com. Or you can just go to BuiltBar.com and use our promo code LOCKEDON15 and get 15% off your next order. Keith, you, you kind of you, you talked about it. The least favorite fits, the ones that make you scratch your head. I hope that that I closed out segment one to take out Devin A Chain out of this segment for you. I hope I <laughs> sold you enough on it, but let me know if I did a good enough job. Yeah, uh, nope, he still made it into this segment, right? He still <laughs> made it into this segment, man. At the end of the day, listen, I, I understand them having injuries, speed, and everything, but I, I still don't know. Is he that reliable back for, and you, you talked about it, snap share shifting, right? But yeah. is he that reliable back to where it's like, okay, I can hand him the football 25, 30 times a game? Because I think ultimately that's what Miami needs, right? I think they it's like they're trying to compile a running back room based off of guys that all can give you 15 snaps, right? But the problem is that one of those guys go down or two of those guys go down, then now what, right? So and I, I think right. that was my biggest issue. I like the fit if you tell me, okay, <clears throat> more speed, more speed, more speed. But I think there, there is no complimentary piece to this. I like the player. I think he will be able to rip off big runs. But I think about making it to week 16, week 17, week 18, and still having a really productive running back room. And then we know last year, right, Miami Dolphins fans were extremely critical of Mike McDaniel not being able to run the football or simply choosing not to run the football. Yeah. I think the Dolphins ranked, like, close to last or something like that when it came to running the football. So um, it's just a, it's, it's, it's a question, right? It's a question. You talked about, you know, the optimistic perspective of it. It's just one of those things where I'm, I'm not extremely critical of it, but I got to see it to believe it, right? You got to show it to me. I got to <laughs> see it to believe it. Um, Then I may buy in. But that's going to make for a fun offense for those who play Madden and things like that. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Then you put Devon H. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's going to be able to run with those guys. Um, Miami Dolphins, as long as two is able to stay healthy, they will be a threat in the AFC. No, I, I agree with you, Keith. You made some really good points. And like you said, I think that's the part, like just not having the full – it feels like carbon copy, carbon copy, carbon copy, but – the carbon, the next carbon gets smaller than the next, than the first. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I, I totally understand where you're coming from with that. I think for me, Keith, you know, and, and some people might be like, well, DP, what are you doing? It's a six-round pick. The command is taking Chris Rodriguez Jr. I did not like this pick at all. And, and it's just, oh, you got Brian Robinson Jr. Like, you have a, a, a physical downhill presence that's going to, Eat up first and second yardage, get the you know the short yards, get what's there, the red zone touches. He can do that, get in the end zone for you and push the pile. He can do all the same things that uh that Rodriguez can do. And I think he has better footwork. And I think he's a better pass catcher out of the backfield than Rodriguez. He passed with you don't uh, for me, this was a situation where Keith, you know, I'd rather get a Kenny McIntosh. Right? I'd rather get a pass catching back. If if you especially yes, Antonio Gibson's still there. But it's like, okay, for how long? You know what I mean? Like, how, what's the what's the what's the the plan for in terms of being a complimentary piece? You know, you had different guys. You know, Sean Tucker was available late in the draft. Another thing, there was like he had a heart issue or something like that, medical wise. So if you don't, you wanted to wait till after the draft to get him, cool. But just you, if you feel like you need another running back, Keith, in my opinion, if you're Washington, I really just wait. It, it, it's six round. Those it, it's not high draft capital, right? But still, I wouldn't have taken. Rodriguez because like you talk about it's no complimentary skill set like you're not okay if Rodriguez comes in on the field the defense doesn't have, it's no change of pace it's like oh another big strong physical not 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 that explosive back great oh. cage him in you know what I mean where it's like you bring a shiftier presence a more explosive presence and it just shit it 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 just changes the, the way that the defense has to defend you know what I mean not sledgehammer 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 or, or 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 thunder thunder thunder. Let's get some lightning back there. And JJ McKissick is not there anymore. So for me, this one left me scratching my head a little bit. I didn't really like it, Keith, because I felt like they could have went somewhere else, or they could have drafted the running a little another running back a little bit earlier. But like I said, Kenny McIntosh was available. Sean Tucker was available. Uh, Keith Mitchell, Keith, you talk about speed, changing the pace, four three seven. 
Four three seven in the that's the type of guy I want to pair with an Antonio Gibson and and a, and a, um Brian Robinson Jr. Not a, not not Chris Rodriguez man. It just I I didn't I didn't like this pick really much at all. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I and I had all the same I guess similar feelings. Um, the, the other the other team I want to bring up were questionable and not from a perspective of it's bad, right? But just yeah, damn man, y'all took all the running backs. That's the Seattle Seahawks, man. They Thank took you, Kenneth Walker. Right <laughs> then, then they doubled down, drafted Zach Sharp in the early. <laughs> then they said, you know what? Since y'all don't want the running backs, we gonna go get another <laughs> one. And they got Kenny McIntyre, man. But listen, if you ask me, the Seattle Seahawks gonna have one of the best running back rooms in the entire NFL because Crazy. all of these guys are, are capable of being. Kenneth Walker showed that he's a one, right? And then Zach Charbonnet and Kenny McIntosh both shows that, that they can be reliable tools and get through some games as the number one running back. And that's your entire running back room, man. So you're talking about what they lost for shot Penny, right, to the mm -hmm. Philadelphia Eagles. They easily replaced that with Kenny McIntosh, right? Then Zach Charbonnet is another ground and pound type football player. And then you still have Kenneth Walker, who's a complete running back, who's the number one running back last year. So maybe you're talking about a three-headed monster, all on rookie contracts. The Seattle Seahawks are going to run the football. Oh, listen, without question. They paid Gino that money. They're still going to run the rock 40 times a game. I, you know what I mean? Like, this, they definitely – and I would say this too, Keith, like even looking at Kenny McIntosh, I feel like you could flex him out and play some slot receiver. He's got the build for it, the movement skills, the receiving prowess, right? He knows how to track the ball, and he's a natural hands catcher. So I think like you can really get creative in how you use him. Um, I don't know if he – I can't remember if he done anything on special teams in terms of like returning, but I wouldn't be surprised if he could. You know what I mean? He's just that type of mover, just real fluid and smooth. Um, and patience and vision and everything. But, yeah, no, they 100% said, okay, so no one else wants running backs? That's fine. We'll yeah, take they, them. You they, know what I mean? They told the 49ers, like, hey, y'all thought y'all like running backs? Watch what we do, right? <laughs> like, we're, we're, we're going to outrun y'all this upcoming year. So, man, those matchups. And, and they went and got some really talented running not, not Not some, like, random guys that nobody really knows about, but they look they look like football players. Like, no, they got big some bigger names, like McIntosh, Charbonnet. They went and got some high-level type of talent. Uh, so no, they, they 100 percent took that moniker from the from the Niners. 100. percent Yeah, so that man, it's it's, it's going to be extremely fun, man. Just watching the uh, the Seattle Seahawks. They drafted Anthony Bradford, the interior offensive line, who's a role grading guy. So yeah, expect them to tote the rock, man. But look, coming up next, man, that was we we did the best, right? We did the questionable. Now it's just to talk about what's flat out bad, right? Like, oh no, I'm sorry. We talk about our surprise picks, right? Like, yeah, which surprise. ones that's underrated? I'm sorry, I tried to get straight into, you know, I, I had that negative energy over. There. I had to shift <laughs> a little bit, man. I had to shift a little bit. We're going to talk about the surprise <laughs> situations, um, with running backs that nobody's talking about that they have a chance to really be really productive in those offensive schemes. So coming up next, surprise fits running back edition. Surprise fits, sleeper fits, Keith. I, I got one. It's in your neck of the woods, big dog. And when we were sitting there together when this pick came through, and we were like, whoa, Kendrick Miller to the New Orleans Saints. You know what I mean? I feel like this, that was a surprise, yeah, he, but I think you it's a You got to explain this to me because it surprised the hell out of me. So you have to explain <laughs> it to me. I, I need to know what, what what's optimistic about this one. Let me know. So, to me. so I think both of us look at, like we both had him as like a, I think a fourth round grade, like a, like top of day three, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. okay, never mind. I have a fourth round grade, I think. And, um, but I, I, we all knew that the Saints were going to come into this situation with, Al, with Alvin Kamara's status up in the air. They were going to go running back. Now, granted, we did not expect him to go Kendra over like Tank and some of the other names. Like, he, I'm, I'm going to list some of the names he went over. He went before Tajay Spears, he went before Devin A. Chain, before Tank Bigsby. Before Izzy, like he went before a lot of guys that we kind of didn't foresee in a sense. But the reason why I say this could be a sleeper pick is because of the fact that you got. I like the weapons that they have there with healthy, right? All those receivers, um, Derek Carr being there, the offensive line is good, and I feel like they're gonna put him in a right, really good situation. And then with Ivan Kamara, I, I think we both may expect him to be suspended, maybe not long, but just for a couple games. Then you kind of walk into this situation as the rookie, right? Like, I know they brought Jamal Williams in too. So that, you know what I'm saying? So they still got another veteran back. But I think Kendrick Miller, size, uh, you know, good long speed, you know, in open field. I think he runs hard, you know, up the middle, up the gut. 
good. His footwork was better than I expected. I thought he was going to be kind of one of those just vertical guys, but he actually was able to exchange gaps and get through uh, side lanes as they're opening with peripheral vision. I think this could be a sleeper situation uh, with Alvin Kamara being out, and it's a, it, they, 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 they use the draft capital. They use the capital to go get this kid. And I think they're expecting him to play. And he, he's got some talent. So I, I think this is a, it was a surprise and a sleeper pick for me. It's all wrapped in one. Yeah, it, it was both for me too, man. And I'm, I'm trying to shift my mindset from they drafted a, a, a role to be filled to they drafted depth, right? Because you would yeah. think if Alvin Kamara is going to be hurt, then you're going to go after one of these quicker backs, one of these shifty backs like Tajay Spears, who just so happens to play in New Orleans right up the street from the Super Bowl, <laughs> right? But we're not going to get into that. Um, I, I thought they would have went more that route, but they went, you know, the heavier bag, the bigger bag. And, if, if you know, we said on this podcast, right, Kendrick Miller, who he reminds me of, his running style is very similar to Le'Veon Bell. Like, he's very patient behind the line of scrimmage. So I, I'm trying to transition my thought process from like, hey, Alvin Kamara is going to be suspended. You need that guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield, do all these different things to, okay, you know what? They did the evaluation. They felt comfortable with drafting Kendr Kendra Miller. It's not necessarily a replacement. It's more so a drafting depth because we're going to, you know, want this guy to play football. So I thought it was rather interesting, man. That, that one definitely, like you said, man, both. It, it surprised me. I, I had questions, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to understand it still right now, man. But you asked me a surprise fit. That if you today, if I had to put money, I'm not a betting man, right? I may next football season, just to disclose information. I may start, I may start doing a little something next season. But if I had to put money on a situation and God to blow up, it's New York Jets running back, Israel Banda Candle. I'm gonna tell you why, man. This guy's explosive and, and Brees Hall, everyone talked about Brees Hall. Brees Hall is coming off an ACL injury. You don't know if he's going to be healthy come week one week five, week six, right? And I'm all for not rushing players back, man. I've, I've had a torn ACL before. You know, it, it's not fun. It's difficult. You have to get over the physical hurdle and the mental hurdle. I know science is advancing so much, but it's still that, right? And there's still a percentage of players that come back and they're not themselves. So what they did was in the fifth round, they're able to grab a guy that when you watch the film, same thing, right? When you give him that runway and he can hit those outsides, you see the explosiveness, right? You see a guy that's able to finish runs. You see a home run hitter. So I really like it from that perspective that you got really good value from a, a fifth round guy that has explosiveness in his game, right? That can offer those home run hitting situations. And you look at the rest of that running back room when they have Bam Knight, who was another guy I think they drafted in like the sixth, seventh round. So you could go in there with two late round running backs and both of them be extremely productive in his offense. So uh, Israel Bandicanda is definitely one that sticks out to me as far as a guy that out of nowhere, he can drive that conversation of quote unquote devaluing running backs because he could be a fifth round back that is highly productive. Keith, I, I like that. I think we both agree, we both really agree on that. Like, don't rush back Brees Hall. Let him come back healthy. Let him come back confident and, and secure in his body uh, where he can make the cuts and the movement skills that he was making pre-ACL tear. So I love that 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 fit to with Izzy to the to the Jets. But I got another one, Keith, similar to to you no know, similar situation. That's Chase Brown to the Bengals. I really like this. I think this is a surprise and sleeper pick, mainly because like, yeah, Joe Mix is gonna be there. You know, for for now, right? Like, I think he's coming up on the contract. He may not be there in twenty twenty four, but you drafted a guy that can that fits your running system very well. You know what I mean? With the stretch zone, you know, pressing outside, one cut, explosive back, and Chase Brown. We all know that him and his brother are legitimate athletes. So you get him going, you know, east and west to to plant that foot and get upfield, north and south, get those shoulders square and parallel to the opposite, uh, to the to the end zone that he's attacking. And I, and with the weapons that you have, right? You know, you have having T. Higgins and 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 you know Ch Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd, the the offensive line they've put work into, and then having an absolute sniper at quarterback with Joe Burrow. These running backs are going to see too high. I, I, I don't believe you can go single high unless you have, unless you may be the Miami Dolphins because you got like three legitimate cornerbacks that you could feel comfortable with playing man to man with Jalen Ramsey, Xavier Howard, and now rookie Cam Smith. But they're going to see too high. And I think Chase Brown really complements this offense. I think he fits very well. I don't believe he's going to, he's not going to give you what I think Joe Burrow, I mean, Joe Mixon gives you in a passing game. 
But in terms of being the secondary back, P. Ryan is gone, right? I think P. Ryan went. I forgot where he went. But P. Ryan is gone. Uh, oh, he went to Denver. He went to Denver. So P. Ryan is not there. They need the RB2. I really like this fit for Chase Brown as one of those uh, surprising sleeper picks heading into the 2023 NFL season. Yeah, man. In, in the wrap up, my side of it, right? We're talking about surprising sleeper picks. My last one would be Eric Gray to the New York Giants, man. I think yep. the Giants are going to put uh, Saquon Barkley on a pitch count, right? And then we know there's contract situations. You don't know how that's going to figure and how that's going to pair, but Eric Gray is explosive. He's agile. He's elusive, um, has home run hitting speed. He's fun to watch, right? Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if people start calling him mini Saquon in a sense, just because mm -hmm. he can make those moves in the open field so that's another sleeper situation the Giants are going to run the football again this year you're not you're going to want to put Saquon on a pitch count so that way he help, he's healthy down the back end so I'm expecting every grade to get some run man and listen just wrapping up this show uh there were so many more surprising and sleeper fits with the running back position because as much as we like to devalue running backs we can say one thing that they usually have a lower bust factor, right? They usually yeah. come in and they're productive in some situation. Now, once we get to year five, would you get out of them? I don't know. But usually if you draft a running back, he's going to contribute. You're not going to worry about, hey, this guy can't even step on the field. So I think that's the fun thing about running backs, man. It's, like I said, there's so many other teams um, that had sleeper situations. I'm excited about this class. This is a very talented class. Um, and you know me, man. I got Bijan in the top 10. So I and Jameer Gibbs, right, in the top 15. And top, so you top 15. You know, day one, man, of the draft, I was extremely excited. But, DP, man, that wraps it up for me, big dog. The running backs, scheme fits, the good, the worst, the, the best, the sleeper fits. Man, it was a fun episode. Oh, always, always, man. And we always appreciate all the love and support you guys, you know, family, which, which y'all give us, man. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts, get the latest episode as soon as it is available. We thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen, not just today, but every day, Monday through Friday, to all the everydays, you are family. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Tune back in tomorrow. We might be talking some wide receivers. You know, we might get into wide receiver fits and how we, you know, how we view it after the 2023 NFL draft. But in terms of Twitter for Keith Sanchez, you can find him on Twitter at the talent code. I'm Damian Parson, DP underscore NFL. Come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.